All right, so today I want to talk about finite state machines in JavaScript. So the idea behind this is that if you control your application by giving it a certain set of states and the actions that can be taken are determined by the states that it's in, then you can build a less error prone program. Now here I've defined a finite state machine. Basically it's just an object. Inside of it we're going to have a property called state or something like that. This is my initial state. So whatever object I'm building, this is the initial state that it's going to start in. Then I'm going to define something. We can call it transitions or you can call it something else. This is the list of potential states for the object. So it can be sober, drunk, really drunk, asleep or hungover. And it can only exist in those states. So this is a finite list of states that it can exist in. Now, depending on which state you're in, there's going to be different actions that you can take. If you're sober, we're going to say inside of here, there's going to be one method, one action that we can take, and that's drink. So I'm defining a, uh, an object that's, let's say it's a college student, and sober is their first initial state, and the one action they can take when they're in that state is drink. If I call some other method that doesn't apply to this state, nothing's going to happen there's going to be a state called drunk. And in this one, again, the one action they can take is drink when they're really drunk. That's the next state. Now there's three things that can happen in this. So they could drink or they could pass out or they can throw up. So we've got three potential actions. We can't call the throw up or pass out option if we're in the sober state or the drunk state. All we can do is one of these three things. Then there's an asleep state which has one action. When you're in the asleep state, you cannot drink. It's just not something that can be done when you're in that state. So we've got this waking action that we can take. Just close these down to make it easier to see them all. Now, the last one, hungover. When you're in that state, two things you can do. One is try and open your eyes. The other one, drink again. So here we have a set of five potential states and the state that you're in is going to determine which methods you're allowed to call. So that's where we get this idea of a finite state machine. The machine is helping us to transition from one state to another and the state that we're currently at controls what you're allowed to do. Now two other parts here. We've got a method called dispatch. So this isn't inside of the states here. It's not inside the transitions. Dispatch this is what you're going to call whenever you want to carry out some action. So down here, we've created an object. I've called it Jeff, and it is using this state machine as its prototype. So it's got access to everything that's inside of there. And it's got one property of its own called name. Its value is Jeff. That part's not important. It's just the fact that we have an object which is using this state machine. That's what we're building here. Now, Jeff is going to be able to call this dispatch method. And the dispatch method wants to know, what do you want to do? Well, I want to call the drink method. So this is going to attempt to call a drink method. Inside the dispatch, right inside of here, we're going to go and take this action name, the method that we want to call, which in our case right here is drink. So we're going to go to this.transitions this being the machine, transitions, right here, that is the array of potential states. We can see the sober, drunk, really drunk, asleep. Those are the different states that we can have. And inside of one of those, we're going to look at the one for the current state. So whatever our current state is inside of here, if we're sober, there's drink. If we're drunk, there's drink. If we're really drunk, then we've got three things. If we're asleep, we've got wake. Now, our current starting state was sober. So we have a drink method. Great. So there is going to be, inside of sober, we're looking for something with this name called drink. That's going to go inside of here. Now, if it doesn't exist, this is going to fail. This is going to be undefined. So if it's undefined, it's not valid for the current state. Nothing happens. If it is valid, though, if there is a method called drink inside of whatever the current state is, we're going to call that. So we use the apply method. 
If you don't know what apply is, I've got a link down in the description for my video on call, apply, and bind to help you understand that. But basically, we're just going to call this function. Machine, our machine object, this is going to be the context for calling it. So everywhere inside of here that we're using the word this, we're referring to our state machine. Then we've got the option to pass in a payload, some sort of data. What are all the things that you want to pass in? Different methods are going to require different options. So whatever it is, it's going to be an array because we're using apply. So this is going to be an array that we're going to split apart. I have an array that I'm passing in one object inside of. It's got a property called type of alcohol. All right, now if we go up and we look at the drink method, so let's go inside of sober and we'll look at the drink method. It's going to take a payload here. It's looking for two things. Now we're only passing in one. So this object is going to be the first thing that comes in here. Come back up. Second, we weren't providing that. So this is going to be undefined. This is just to show you how this would break down with the splitting apart with the spread operator for the payload. So we've only got one thing in an array. So it's this. This would be undefined. And we'll just leave a note there for you. OK. Now, when we call this method, we're going to write out whatever the current state is. Now, it should be sober. And then it'll write out the fact that we're drinking. And it'll say what kind of type, what type of drink are we drinking? Then our function says if the type is alcohol, we're going to write out another message. And then we're going to call the change state method, which was the other one down next to dispatch, right down here, change state. All we're doing here is changing the value of state. Now, anytime I want to make a change to the state, this is the method that I'm going to call. Now, this should be abstracted away. There are libraries like xState that will take these two parts, the dispatch and the change state. Those will be sort of hidden from you. You will define what your states are and what the methods are that you want to call. These could be methods that are inside of your own code. That's absolutely fine. But those other two methods are sort of going to be hidden away. And you will have a method to call to change the state. And this method down here, the change state, it really should check to make sure that what you are trying to change to is a valid state. So we can do things like that. We can validate that new state actually exists. And these libraries will do that, that kind of thing for you. OK. So we have change state whenever we want to move between them. We've got dispatch when we want to call any method. So we, with our object, we can call a method, passing in a payload to that. And then we can see what it says. All right, so if I run this now, here we go. Current state is sober. We're drinking alcohol. There's the message. And then our current state right here, drunk. That's what we get. Now, if I call this a second time, drinking alcohol again. We'll clear this. There we go. Current state was sober. We drank. Current state is drunk. Drinking alcohol. Audio's pants. Now our current state is really drunk. So we've moved from sober to drunk to really drunk. But nowhere here in my code have I actually said I want to change the state. I'm letting the fact that I'm in the sober state or in the drunk state determine what happens. It's the same method that I'm calling twice. But it's sort of abstracted away. It's hidden away from me the fact that there is a drink method here. There's a drink method here. There's a drink method here. Each one of them does slightly different things. So if I'm in the drunk state, I can go to really drunk or I can go back to sober. So if I drank something that wasn't alcohol, that's my if statement right here inside of the drink method. This is custom to the drunk state. If I'm in the drunk state and I drink something that's not alcohol, so let's come down here and try that one out. So let's say I'm going to drink coffee. Clear this out, run it again. So we start at sober, drank alcohol. We changed our state to drunk because we did this. That was in the code. And now we're drinking coffee and questioning what it was that we said. And we're back to the sober state at the end of all this. We can 
try this, calling it multiple times here. Let's open this up a little bit more so we can see it. So we're at sober, drank, got to drunk, drank, got to really drunk, drank coffee, and now we're back to drunk. So we can move backwards and forwards through the various states as long as we are providing methods that actually exist and providing the options that exist. And then we're letting the program itself, the finite state machine, that is what's determining how we move through these different states. Oh, I've got a typo in my code up here. Inside of here, this was supposed to be change state, not change state two. There we go. So we drank alcohol three times. First time we went from sober to drunk. Second time we went from drunk to really drunk. And then the third time after drinking alcohol, we threw up and passed out. And now our current state is asleep. Now, once we're in that asleep state, our only option is the wake function. And then we've got, we'll be in hungover and we can call the open eyes. So let's do that. Sleep needs us to call the wake method. And there's nothing else that we need to pass into that. And then Jeff can call his open eyes. And we can see where we are at that point. Okay, so the drunk, we passed out, we got to asleep. We called the wake method, that was waking us up. Then we got into the hungover state. And that was our final one right here. And then we can call again from the hungover. There was also a drink method inside of there. And this one allows us to pass in something. It's the drink method. It does have a payload. So I can say either type alcohol or we can do something that's non-alcohol. If I do it with alcohol in the hungover state, we're back to drunk. But if we change this one, do something that's not alcohol, there we go, from hungover, now we're drinking water, saying never again, and we're back to the sober state. And that's it. That is a finite state ma machine. It is just this process where you define a series of potential states, and every state has its own custom list of potential methods that can be called. So let's close this. There we go. So those are our five states. If we try to call something that's not in that list, a method that's not in that list, it's not going to work. So I'll come down here to the bottom and just to illustrate this, I'm going to comment all of that out and we'll say jeff.dispatch and we'll call an eat method. Nothing at all happens. Because with that one, here if I shift this one down and uncomment that, that is not a valid method for us to call. So it doesn't matter how many times we call this, it's not going to change our state. And it's not crashing because we have the handling inside of our code to make sure that this is a valid method before we try to call it. All right, I hope that helps you out. I hope that makes sense. Uh, as I said, I'm going to leave a copy of the, or the link rather, to the video on call, apply, and bind, and I will leave a link to the source code for this file down in the description as well. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, and as always, thanks for watching.